let's just begin and uh, build our very first Alteryx, Alteryx workflow. So each icon you can see over here, those are nothing but the tools in Alteryx. So I'm just going to drag my input tool and connect with some data source. So in Alteryx, actually, if you go to the files and select file, when you download a data type, you have the some sample data provided uh, to explore, as well as, as we've seen that on the website as well, we have some, you know, uh, sample data. So I'm going to take this tutorial data, actually, just to explore. And they saved it as a Alteryx specific uh, database file, YXDB. And here, uh, Actually, while reading the data very first time, you can, if data is very large, actually, you can just mention it how many records you would like to read at the first go, like 100 or 1000 or 10,000, that kind of to avoid, you know, excessive reading of a data time. Sometimes when you connect to the database, it takes a lot of time. And we can see that we have a couple of columns over here. You are, you do have the preview of first 100 records by default. There is one interesting tool in Alteryx, which is Browse, which gives you the data profiling. So once I drag it here in the workflow space, now you can see that this is nothing but a out icon. Actually, you can see the same thing. And in the Browse, once you click on the Browse, now you can see that you, know, you have the profiling of your data over here. So instead of having this, uh, statistical like a mathematical tables i'll just replace it to the bar charts so that it would be better to understand and visualize what is there in the data and if you want to see like a particular columns you can just click on the particular column and you will get the details if data is not good that kind of you know how many unique values are there and uh, how does it look like so you get data type size in 32 everything so let me just check one by one that you know uh, so I can see that in the last name, actually, I do have some non not okay to data. We can see it in the latter part. Uh, then this column looks okay. This field also looks okay. This field, yeah, this field is also okay. This is so okay. This is also okay. This is also okay. So I don't have like, you know, very clean data actually. It normally doesn't happen that way. You get a lot of dirty data. Only I can see that gender column has some... Uh, characters uh, which are unnecessary and in Alteryx in the results window you want in the data you have two tabs actually one is data and another is the metadata so once you click on the metadata you will get to know the data types of each one of the fields present in the data so that is also like you know it is available easily and some of those are Alteryx specific uh, data types okay we are good now and then what we are going to do is I'll just switch back to the data and see that, okay, I have first name, last name and the prefix. So what we will do is first thing we can do is as our data is very clean, we don't need the data cleansing, like, you know, replacing some nulls or uh, blanks or removing the white space, that kind of. So what we will do is we will go for next tool, uh, which is like, you know, formula tool this formula tool is very flexible actually whenever you want to add any column specific so just i thought about you know combining all these three uh, columns first name last name and the prefix so i want prefix first then i will say i want first name and then i want last name and now you will see automatically it is populated here. So the one thing I can notice in this uh, particular window is that this is how it is getting populated. So there is a no space actually coming up in between prefix and first name, last name. So what I will do is I'll just add space in between so that you know we can just separate those things. Okay. So now this looks okay to me and uh, it, it has the separated things. All right. And uh, now after that, what we are going to do is, so if I just click on here, uh, it's not, no, it's not required. You have to run the workflow first and it is not required that you use the browse tool each and every time because 
it just gives the memory time to run it so it's better to have less so you have the name column now what we will do is we will try to remove these excessive characters in the gender column so how we can do is in the parse actually you have the text to column option and here I can just specify which column I'm looking for and I'll just separate it with the delimiter so I'm doing that and I know that how many times it is appearing right see so here it is like once and twice but it is always like you know after four to five characters so it is going to divide it that way so let me just randomly take the number of columns and uh, see how it goes so I'll take the four columns and I'm saying that leave all the extra characters into the last column gender okay and if you have the predefined like you know quotes or brackets in the data you can just check the box here you don't have to mention here okay we are good and i'll just run this part and see my output so if i see my output actually gender column is divided into the four and still i do have one slash left so that means i have to increase my number of columns to five so that now i will have you know only male female those values left in that last column okay so this is passed now I'm going to go back and uh, take a select tool and in the select tool what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some of the columns because these are the additional columns now I don't need the first name last name prefix column as well I don't know the gender don't need that one so what I will do is I'll just run I'll do this and I'll do shift and enter and then I'll just you know, move these fields to the towards the end so I'll just move these okay and then I do have this gender field which I'll take it up at a previous place and then I have this name field that also I'll take it up here then gender I think it was here okay so now in the select tool what I can do what I will be able to do the capabilities of tool right so when you click on this tool actually you will get this option of you know open an example and see what this particular tool does so you will get to see that okay this tool has the capabilities different capabilities you can see you can change the data type you can rename the column and add the description so this kind of and uh, this is like an easy thing like you know ascending and descending alphabetical order also you can do and then this so for each tool actually you should be able to see these examples where you will be able to understand each tool and what is its functionality so it's very easy for you know business people to understand because it is everything is automated and even though they are non-technical it is quite simple to use the functionalities so that's it for now we required uh, okay let me run run it one more time and see the output now I can see my output actually okay I forgot to rename the column of gender so let's just rename it and then see the output now we have this as our output okay so then we have the email IDs which are also very clean actually so data is very clean um, one more thing we can see is that we have the birthdays and the registration date time so I think we don't need these uh, uh, if we want to parse this particular birth date suppose and I just want it like in a simple date time format I can just go here and as we know in the in the first like you know first art itself we saw that metadata and if you see the data type of the birth date it is date time so here I have to choose the date time and automatically the columns which has that data type will appear and I'll select the birth date and I'll give here like you know, birth date out and I want a specific format so I will go for MMDDY which is the general format that we use and then I'll run and I'll see what is the output of this so I'll just go back to this okay so I'm getting the birth date in the proper format and I don't require the time so now 
again I can drag the select tool and say that you know um, this column I don't need it so unselect that one I just need this column and I rename it birth date so now what I will do is as usual I'll just move it up and select this column and I move this column down okay so as of now we are good if I go to the options tab you can see that you have particular sort order as well so if I say that you know sort original field on your original field ascending descending star sort of new field name that kind of so do new field type so if I do that way see it automatically took that field actually as the first which we populated so I don't want that actually so I am good with no sorting as of now the revert to incoming columns okay so I am back to the incoming columns and again I have to just place it back okay so I'll run and I'll see my data the same thing you can do for the registration date time as well but we don't require it as of now and if we see user ID 100 and uh, okay so now I have to check the unique records and I'll just check for the user IDs how many unique records are there so always we do the distinct in the SQL so that is something which is the unique record so if I see number of records in this this particular tab were 8716 and if I go for the unique unique are also same so that means there are no duplicates present in the data so which is like a very clean data actually so I don't need this and then I think we are good we have just little bit you know, prepared our data and manipulated it so just to clean the workflow here actually you can add the annotation just like this so we are you can see that always and you can add the annotation that you know, uh, split the gender column and play it that step and then you say that in this particular annotation you can say that select uh, required columns and rename So that it will be easy to understand that what you are doing in this particular set of variables okay so this is something if you want to give more specific actually in this particular you are renaming the gender column and here you are renaming the budget column so you can just mention that particular thing if you want into the automation okay so now we are good and I don't think we need the browse tool anymore unnecessarily it takes the memory time but there is the advantage actually when you do the runtime tab here in the configuration window you have advantage to disable your you know uh, browse tools macros or any kind of output that you are writing suppose when you are debugging the workflow and you don't want to overwrite your output you can do that simply with that tab so now we are just going to output it into the you know kind of a clean data or processed data kind of file so I'll just say processed underscore output and save it in the excel format and at the same location and it is a sheet one you can rename the sheet also processed underscore output and okay and here actually you see by default it selects the overwrite the sheet so next time when you run the workflow it will just overwrite or you have the option to append or delete or create so it is same like you know you write the SQL queries to or create the uh, SQL functions to create the table first and then you know uh, write and read and write those tables so I'll just run it once I run it actually in the output tab 
you can see that you have the processed output and if i want to see it i can just simply click it or you can just locate it into the drive location and you will see that okay you have all the data you have all the data output okay that's it for now and see you guys in the next tutorial where we will just look into little more advanced options of the data preprocessing and the manipulation and see you guys in the next tutorial until then happy learning stay safe bye for now